So grade 12s, we're into the last unit, and we're going to be talking about lines and planes. And so lines differing from vectors that they are set at a certain place. So I keep talking about vectors. You could slap them anywhere on the page you want. A line has a specific place where it exists. So when we were in grade 9, our thinking was we need to have a slope and we need to have a point in order to define our line. So we can graph this thing and we can determine the equation. So we can use the points A23, A, and B at 5, 7. I'm having trouble counting here today. There we go. and determine the equation of the line that passes through those points. Okay. So our thinking in grade 9 was, I can see that my slope is rise over run. So I've got my y values the difference in my y values over the difference in my x values. I rise over my run kind of an idea. So my slope would be 4 over 3 for this line. When we asked you to do the equation of a line, we did it generally in slope y-intercept form. And we would substitute a point, your choice, into the line where we know the slope so that we can solve for the y-intercept. So if I do that in this particular case, I have 3 equals 4 thirds times 2 plus b. 3 is 8 thirds. Sorry, Cooper, I'm going too fast. I would subtract 8 thirds from both sides to get my b which is one-third. Final answer is y equals four-thirds x plus one-third. And that's the form we liked the most in grade nine. We call that slope y-intercept form. Oops, I can't spell either. We also said, you know what? We have a better form that's a little prettier, and we call it general form. Today, we're also going to call it Cartesian or scalar, just to give you a whole bunch of new words. And we had general form in grade 9, where we have no fractions, everything on the left side, and the x leading coefficient is positive. So if I want to get this into general form, I would multiply everything by 3. I would put everything on the left side. And I would make sure the leading coefficient was positive just by tradition. It doesn't really matter. And that would be general form Cartesian or scalar. So you saw that in grade 9, quite familiar to us. We want to take the same idea and apply it to grade 12 concepts and write the same thing um, when we're dealing with 2 space so that we can extrapolate to 3 space tomorrow. So what we did with grade 9 was that we needed a slope and we needed a point. Okay, so in grade 12, we're going to use, instead of a slope, we're going to use a direction vector. So in this particular case, my direction vector, I'm going to go back to my diagram for a second. My direction vector is a vector that goes in the direction of A to B. So that tells me the direction of my line. So my direction vector we call M, strangely, just like slope in grade 9 would be the same as AB because that certainly shows the direction.
my direction vector for a b would be okay my horizontal component would be 5 subtract 2 my vertical component would be 7 subtract 3 strangely enough it's 3 4 and we've seen those numbers before we saw on the last slide that my slope is 4 over 3 a lot of you use that in your assignment that you did finding two perpendicular vectors um, you were using the slope thinking and it's coming from that direction vector so for my line, I'm going to call it L. My direction vector could be 3, 4. So a direction vector for L. Oops, sorry, a direction vector. For L could be 3, 4. It could be negative 3, negative 4. It could be 6, 8. It can be any scalar multiple. And you know for lines from grade 9 as well, you could have a slope that's a multiple of the slope. So 4 over 3 could be 8 over 6, and that would be fine as well. So the direction vector can be any scalar multiple. Okay, for our line through AB, it makes sense to us that we have a direction vector a b or some scalar multiple of that as well so if i have a point p be any point on the line let's put p right here doesn't matter. P can be anywhere. So if I've got P anywhere on the line, then it has to be true that a vector from A to P let's do red. has to be some scalar multiple of the direction vector. So mine looks like it's one and a half times the direction vector. It has to be some scalar multiple. So from that, I can say AP is, okay, point P is XY, point A is 2, 3. So I have to have X subtract 2 because A is 2, 3. Y subtract 3 is some scalar multiple of my direction vector. That is a vector equation of a line. It's not its prettiest form, but that's where it comes from. This is how I like it better for this particular example. The vector equation of a line could be written as x, y. I just feel like I've got too much going on on the left-hand side is 2, 3 plus t times 3, 4. So what I've got is a vector, uh, a position vector from 0 to p is the addition of the 0 vector or the position vector from 0 to a and is and a multiple of the direction vector. So let me draw a quick diagram just to show you that this is in fact the same as this. So back up to our diagram. If I have a position vector that goes from 0, 0 to P, and I wish this one wasn't quite so close to the origin, but if I've got a vector from 0, so a position vector from 0 to P, oh man, it's crooked. That could be a combination of the vector from 0 to a, so OA, plus a scalar multiple of the direction vector right here. So this is a scalar multiple of the direction vector. I will get to OP. All of that to say, this is the vector equation of a line. This is a vector. It used to be a point 
2, 3. It is now a vector from the origin to 2, 3. Plus a scalar multiple of the direction vector gets me to any vector from the origin to a point P on the line. It would generate a series of points X, Y. From the same line, we have another type of equation of a line. That's where I take my vector equation. So this is my vector equation, just to remind us. And I just separate the bits. So parametric, so this is vector. This is parametric. I separate the x and the y. So I have two different equations. I have x equals 2 plus t times 3. And for the y component, I have 3 plus t times 4. So two different equations for the very same line. Let me just play for a second with these two parametric equations. If I were to rearrange the first one, so I've got x equals 2 plus t times 3, and I rearrange that for t. So I'm going to do x subtract 2, and then I divide everything by 3. t is equal to x minus 2 over 3. If I rearrange the second one, so I've got, I'm starting with y equals 3 plus t times 4, and I rearrange to get t isolated, I have y subtract 3, it's 4t. Then I divide both sides by 4. I have t equals y minus 3 over 4, and also t equals x subtract 2 over 3. So I've got my last type of equation. It's called symmetric. And that's where I have, in this specific case, x subtract 2 over 3 equals y subtract 3 over 4. There are three types of equations, and I would like to organize those for you in general form so you remember what they all look like. Okay, so for a line, if we are given a point, with direction vector okay. this is a point with components a1 a2 this is a direction vector and your m1 m2 are direction numbers by the way Then, our three forms. First one, vector. A vector equation of a line would be vector xy is vector from 0, 0 to a1, a2 plus a scalar multiple of my direction numbers. Different language for the same thing. The second form is parametric. Where we just separate the x and the y. So I have the x value of the point plus a multiple of the first direction number. I have the y component of the point plus that same scalar multiple of my second direction number. 
third form is symmetric. Where it looks like ratios. I have x subtract the x component of the point over my first direction number. y subtract the y component of the point over my second direction number. And lastly, we still refer to Cartesian slash scalar slash general form as AX plus BY plus C equals zero, which comes right from grade nine. But it's very interesting that for a line in this form, the direction vector is actually negative B comma A. And the normal is AB. And we'll get into that a little bit more. Let's do an example together. Okay, given A is 1, 7, and B is 2, 3, where a vector and parametric and symmetric, I changed my mind, equations for this line. So the first thing that I need to know is what is my direction vector? I'm going to make my direction vector AB. You could do BA. It's all good. So the vector AB would be B component subtract A component. So it would be 1, negative 4. So for my equations, my vector equation would be xy equals. I need a point. You can choose A. I can choose B. It doesn't make a speck of difference. You need one of the two points, now a vector, plus a scalar multiple of our direction vector, 1, negative 4. So your equation of your line might be slightly different than mine. You might have done BA as your direction vector. You might have chosen point B as your initial vector, but it would still be, it still generate the same points. It would still be the same line. Parametric equation of this line could be x subtract 1 over 1. Okay. So I am using, again, the point A, and I'm using my direction vector 1 minus 4, the same as before, would be equal to y subtract 7 over negative 4. Ah, I am so sorry. I just did symmetric. I had parametric in my head and then promptly went and did symmetric. It's easier to fix for me. Okay, sorry, parametric. X equals Y equals. So three forms of the very same line. In fact, I'm just choosing the same numbers. So X equals 1 plus T times 1 y is 7 plus a scalar multiple of the negative 4. So there is my three forms. The second part of the question asks me to generate some points. And you're like, what? Okay, B. Points. So lots of ways to do this, but my thinking would be to use the vector equation and choose different values for t. So if t equals 2, for instance, then my xy would be um, I've got 1, 7 plus t1. I'm just thinking out loud to myself that I'm wondering if I should have written it in parametric. Let's do that. Let's write it in parametric. And now that you're all super mad at me, x equals 1 plus t times 1, y equals 7 plus t times negative 4. Okay, so if t equals 2, my x value would be 1 plus 2 times 1 is a 3. 
if t equals 2, I have 7 plus 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, negative 1. I have generated a point 3, negative 1. Say that t equals 3. That'll get me another point. x equals 1 plus 3 times 1. y equals 7 plus 3 times negative 4. 4, negative 5. 4, negative 5 is a point on that line. And lastly, you can make t whatever you want. Let's t, let's let t equal negative 11, because why not? So I have 1 plus negative 11 times 1. 7 plus negative 11 times negative 4. I would have points negative 10 and positive 44, 51. Negative 10 comma 51 is also a point on that line.